Hi guys, yes, Carlos Tirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a colokizopita al miri, which translates to a savory pumpkin tart. Now it's that time of year where we're going to be using a lot of pumpkin, and there are other ways to use it other than just a sweet version. This savory tart is delicious for even Thanksgiving dinner or if you're having a little get together with friends. It's, it's elegant, delicious, like I said before, and also very easy to make. Let's get started. So it starts off with some scallions. These are six scallions. Usually that's how many come in a bunch. And I'm just gonna thinly slice them. Now, if you don't have scallions, you can use leeks. And if you don't have either of the two, just use a small onion. And the best way to clean scallions, because they do tend to have dirt right in between them, you just put it in a bowl of cold water and you just swish them around. All the dirt will drop down to the bottom. And then what you wanna do is get a strainer and just get the water out, but you're just gonna lift them out of there. You don't wanna pour them into the strainer because then all the dirt that settled down to the bottom is just gonna end up on them all over again. Now these are pretty clean, but if you do end up with a particularly like dirty batch, you're gonna to wanna to rinse them out a few times until the water runs clear. Let's shake some of that water out. And I'm gonna add them to a pan with a little bit of olive oil. Three to four tablespoons will do. And we're gonna cook these over medium heat until they're nice and soft and golden. That's gonna take about five minutes. Okay, so the scallions are done. I'm gonna take this off the heat because now I'm gonna add the canned pumpkin. If you make your own pumpkin, that's fine. You could even use butternut squash instead of pumpkin if that's what you wanna use. You're just gonna to wanna to cook it first and then puree it. But Canned pumpkin is everywhere this season, so I just take the shortcut. If you were to put it into the frying pan while it was on the heat, it might start popping all over the place and make a huge mess. Now we need a little bit of earthy warmth, so I'm adding a half a teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm also gonna add some ground black pepper, and I'm gonna season with a little bit of salt. And give everything a mix. I'm gonna add the mint. So I just finally chopped a little bunch of mint. All you need is about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half to add that really nice freshness. And then the creamy feta cheese. I like to buy feta cheese in blocks, not already crumbled because it tastes so much better. And just crumble it yourself. You can use as much feta as you want in this. This is totally a matter of preference. Just crumble it all in. And my rule is the more feta, the better. <laughs> so I like to go heavy on the feta. And just mix everything really well. Give it a little taste because the last ingredient is going to be the egg. And even though there's a lot of fat in there, it still needs a little more salt for my liking. And I like to put a little more black pepper. Now the last ingredient is an egg. So I'm just going to slightly beat it before I add it in so it incorporates easily. And just like that, the filling is ready. Now we're just going to assemble the tart. I have a 10 inch tart pan over here and some phyllo. This company uh, packages their phyllo in two little films like this. But if you, if you have the longer one, that's fine. You could use that too. You're just gonna wanna make sure that it's properly thawed. Just refrigerate it overnight and then leave it on your counter for about an hour or so to come to room temperature. And then it should be super easy to work with. You're gonna use some melted butter to grease the tart pan first. You could do olive oil too if you're using that instead and if that's what you prefer. And we're gonna take one sheet at a time. We're gonna do a layer. We're gonna do actually five or six layers of phyllo, drizzling each one with butter. Now I'm using salted butter, but you can use unsalted if that's what you want. So this is the sixth layer. I'm not gonna add butter to the sixth one. Now I'm gonna add all of this filling on top and then just take the excess phyllo that's hanging over the side of the pan and just tuck it in. You can cover the sides just a little bit. And now we're gonna to top it with five or six more layers of phyllo, drizzling each layer with some butter. Now you're gonna take all of this fuel that's hanging out over the edge and you're just gonna tuck it in. And you're gonna brush the top and the sides with the remaining butter. This leftover filo, you can just fold it and roll it up. 
and then just go ahead and wrap it back in the plastic and put it in a Ziploc bag or anything that's airtight. And this can stay in the refrigerator for up to a week and just use it for a different recipe. Now you're just gonna score the pie so that way it cooks evenly and then it'll be very easy to slice later on. You won't have to crumble up the phyllo if you've already done the step. And I like to do it into eight pieces. And then just so that way there's no mess in the oven, transfer the tart to a baking pan. Now you can definitely sprinkle the top with some sesame seeds if you like. I'm gonna leave it plain as it is. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna bake in the center rack for about 35 minutes or until it's nice and golden. Once it comes out, let it set. It's gonna need about 30, 40 minutes for it to set and then it'll be ready to be served. So the tart took 45 minutes in my oven to bake. Every oven bakes differently, so keep an eye on it. Now let it cool for about 20 minutes so that way it can set, then carefully take it out and put it either on a cutting board or on a serving platter, whatever you're gonna be serving it on, and then carefully serve it. It tastes delicious as is, but you can definitely serve it with a nice side salad, some tzatziki, feta and olives. It is just so good. Time to take a bite. Mmm, it's so creamy. And the inside is like a savory pumpkin custard that's made really delicious with the scallions that add so much nice flavor. The feta cheese, of course, gives it that little nice hit of tangy creaminess that feta always adds. This one is gonna be a delicious one for your holiday table. All the exact measurements for this recipe are in the description box down below. And you can also print the recipe on DemetriusDishes.com. Let me know what you guys think. If you wanna learn how to make a sweet version of a pumpkin pie, you're gonna to wanna to click right here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, sir.